The movie opens with a TV documentary featuring Chef Auguste Gusteau, Brad Garrett, the youngest chef in France to receive a five-star rating and owner of the best restaurant in Paris. He's also the author of a best-selling cookbook that proudly bears his mantra, Anyone Can Cook. A rat named Remy Patton Oswalt begins talking about his life in monologue fashion. Remy states that he has enhanced senses of both taste and smell, which makes him very meticulous about what he eats. Remy's brother Emil, Peter Sohn, is impressed by this talent, but their father Django Brian Dennehy, who leads the rat's colony, could care less, until Remy reveals that he can recognize the scent of rat poison in or near food. Django puts Remy to work sniffing and testing food for the rest of the clan. Remy is not happy about the rats having to steal food from the garbage. He would prefer to go to the kitchen and take the fresh samples. But Django, who hates and fears humans, forbids Remy and all other members of the clan to interact with them. Despite his father's orders, Remy spends several nights in the home of an old lady, Mabel, which is where the rats have colonized. Reading Chef Gusto's cookbook and watching television programs about cooking, before long, he has a near-expert level of knowledge about food preparation. One day, Remy takes Emil into the kitchen to get some spices that will go with some other food samples they have gathered. Emil hesitates, but agrees to go with his brother. While inside, Remy sees Gusto on TV and listens in, but he learns that a famous food critic named Anton Ego Peter O'Toole, known for having viciously high standards, gave Gusto's restaurant a less-than-stellar review that resulted in the restaurant losing one of its five stars. A heartbroken Gusto died soon after, which meant the loss of another star according to tradition. While reacting to the news of Gusto's death, Remy accidentally wakes Mabel, who attempts to kill him and Emil with a shotgun. They manage to evade her, but the roof of the house is shot multiple times and collapses, exposing the entire rat colony. Django orders everyone to evacuate but Remy stays behind to grab Gusto's book. The rats manage to escape on miniature rafts into a river. Remy uses the cookbook as a flotation device but is separated from the group by a rapid current in the sewers. Hours later, Remy sits, reading the cookbook, waiting for a sign of his friends and family. Through a fusion of grief, loneliness and hunger, Remy begins to hallucinate that the illustration of Chef Gusto is talking to him. Gusto encourages Remy to go up through the sewers and find out where he is now. Remy travels along several pipes and finds that he is in Paris, just in front of Gusto's restaurant. Inside Gusto's, the new head chef Skinner, Ian Holm, meets Alfredo Linguini, Lou Romano, the son of Chef Gusto's recently deceased old flame, Renata. Linguini gives Skinner a letter written by his mother in the hope of getting a job at the restaurant. He is given the role of plonger, or garbage boy, and put to work immediately. As Remy watches the action in the kitchen, he spots Linguini accidentally knocking over a pot of soup and trying to cover up his error by adding random ingredients. Knowing that the combination Linguini has forged will be terrible, Remy freaks out and accidentally falls into the restaurant through the skylight. He tries to escape through an open window, but catches a whiff of the soup and, revolted by the smell, adds his own ingredients to the mixture. However, Inspired by a hallucination of Gusto, continues to fix the soup, but gets caught by Linguini, who traps him underneath a bowl before he can run away and anybody else notices him. Skinner spots Linguini supposedly messing with the soup and chews him out, but he cannot stop the waitstaff from serving the soup. A bowl is served to a food critic, Soline Leclerc, who likes the concoction. Skinner still wants to fire Linguini, but another chef, Colette Tata Janine Garifola, sticks up for Linguini, stating that firing him for making something a customer liked would go against the restaurant's mantra and heavily affect their reputation for the worst. Skinner relents and allows Linguini to stay. Remy makes another attempt to escape, but this time Skinner spots him and Linguini manages to catch Remy in a jar. Skinner orders Linguini to take the rat away and kill it. Linguini takes Remy to a river but cannot bring himself to dispose of the rat. Linguini knows that the rat was the one who really made the soup, and that Skinner will expect a duplication of the recipe. Linguini, seeing that Remy can apparently understand him, takes the rat home and essentially adopts him. The next morning, Linguini sees that Remy, who he has nicknamed Little Chef, has apparently stolen food and bailed, but in reality has cooked breakfast for them both, which is short-lived when Linguini notices that they're late for their first day. When they arrive at the restaurant, 
Linguini tries to find a way to have Remy cook, but without anyone else seeing. After a few tries, they find out that Remy can manipulate Linguini like a puppet by pulling on the boy's hair. Deciding that this is their best method, Linguini and Remy spend the next few days practicing cooking in their spare time. Before long, they are able to make a perfect duplicate of the soup that captured the critics' attention. Skinner appoints Colette to teach Linguini about the finer points of haute cuisine. Colette does not relish the task at first. She's the only female chef, worked very hard to obtain her position and sees Linguini as a possible threat to her status. Later that night, Skinner meets with an agent. We learn that since Chef Gusto's death, Skinner has been making a profit by selling out the Gusto name and image to a line of cheap frozen food. Taking a moment to read the letter from Linguini's mother, Skinner panics and calls his lawyer. The lawyer, Teddy Newton, explains that Gusto's will stipulates that if no heir can be found after two years, a deadline which expires in less than a month, Skinner will inherit the restaurant. Apparently the letter from Linguini's mother states that Linguini is Gusto's son and should be the rightful heir. Skinner refuses to believe it while the lawyer suggests doing a DNA test as well as a background check. Colette begins training Linguini, with Remy also paying rapt attention about the fine art of cooking, and a rapport develops between the two. One night, a group of guests, sick of ordering Linguini's soup time and time again, asks the head waiter Mustafa, John Ratzenberger, about what is new. The staff panics, but Skinner decides to have Linguini prepare an old Gusto-style recipe for sweetbreads. Skinner knows that Gusto considered that recipe a disaster and hopes that it will be Linguini's downfall. Colette begins to follow the recipe, but Linguini, under Remy's manipulations, alters it severely, which angers her. But a few minutes later, Mustafa bursts in and declares that the customers love the new concoction and there are several more orders for it. The other chefs toast Linguini's success later that evening. Skinner, knowing about Remy, brings Linguini into his office and pulls out a bottle of rare 61 Chateau Latour in an attempt to get Linguini to talk about his secrets, but gets nowhere. Meanwhile, Remy, resting outside, spots a mysterious figure in the garbage pails. He is stunned to find that it is his brother Emil. Overjoyed, Remy runs inside to steal some ingredients to fix food for his brother. Afterwards, Emil brings Remy to the new colony. Django is overjoyed to find his second son alive, but grows furious when Remy says he wants to leave the colony and return to Linguini. Remy lets slip that he's observed humans and has found that they're not as bad as Django made them out to be. But Django, in an attempt to change his mind, brings Remy to a storefront that specializes in rat killing, stating his belief that humans and rats must always be enemies. Remy, however, feels differently. He leaves the colony and goes back to Linguini. The next morning, Remy finds Linguini still at the restaurant, exhausted from spending overnight cleaning. He notices Colette pulling in and attempts to hide Linguini's drowsiness with a pair of sunglasses. Colette, annoyed at Linguini for seemingly using her advice to impress and get in closer with Skinner, mistakes his fatigue for snobbishness and slaps him. She confesses to a now awake and startled Linguini that she thought he was not like the other chefs and had romantic feelings for him, and leaves in a huff. In an attempt to apologize, Linguini tries to confess his secret to Colette, but Remy, desperate to remain hidden, forces Linguini forward so that he ends up kissing Colette. After a few seconds of hesitation, she reciprocates and a relationship between the two is formed. Meanwhile, Anton Ego is in his study when he hears news from his butler of Gusto's renewed popularity. Stunned, he vows to return there and find out what is truly going on. Skinner's lawyer returns to confirm Skinner's worst fear. Linguini is indeed Gusto's son. Skinner decides not to tell Linguini and let the will's deadline, a mere three days away, pass, after which he can fire Linguini and suffer no ill effects. Later that night, Linguini goes out on a spin with Colette on her motorbike, leaving Remy behind. He finds Emil with a few other rats outside the restaurant. Remy is frustrated that Emil snitched on him and heads in to get food to keep the other rats from telling the rest of the colony. He sneaks into Skinner's office to find the key to the food locker and in the process finds and reads the documents describing Linguini's parentage. Remy tries to take the documents, but Skinner spots him escaping again. Despite a thorough chase, Remy gets away and Linguini learns the truth. Skinner is fired, 
Linguini takes charge of the restaurant and the gusto no, frozen.